gay is not sin, and Jesus isn't asking the gay person to change and be straight. That's right. The Bible doesn't condemn gays at all. Hey, are you ready? We're close to the last days, and things in our, in our life is going to change. Of course, we've been saying this for a long time, but the more we read, the more we find out it's really getting close. So are you ready? There's a real good way to get ready is just to get to know Jesus Christ. He came to die on the cross for your sins. So here's a little prayer you can pray to get to know Jesus Christ. Say, God, I believe you sent your son, that you gave your only begotten son, to die on the cross to pay the price for my sin. Forgive me of my sins and come to my life. That short little prayer, or one similar to it, you just have to believe that Jesus came to earth, he became a man, and he died on the cross and paid the price for your sin. And then he rose on the third day. Then you got to get to know Jesus by reading the Bible, the King James Bible. And when you read the Bible, you get to know Jesus. And you learn about him. And things are happening in the world. The, the life as we know it is going to be changing. And we see this more or less each day to different degrees getting that the long-term things that we really do our research and studying what the world is doing in different countries and so forth and uh, the what people call chatter like you're hearing things to see if uh, our enemies are talking about something to do to us or something well there is also the chatter of on the end days and you can see it as the decades go by year by year by year how the chatter is increasing till now where it seemed like 2015 how could you get worse than that well 2016 apparently is going to be worse than that a lot of stuff's got to be done so no matter what we say in the to prepare yourselves for a shaking because the world as we know it is going to change God has his own time schedule and because we might say something's going to happen soon doesn't mean it's going to be happening tomorrow or the next day or a month from now or a year from now. There's a lot of things that still need to be done and, and God is the one that's getting things ready. And so you need to just for yourself be ready and, and do your research and study and read the Bible and then look what people are saying that has the credentials that of their research abilities of searching out the world to see what's happening. And so these really exciting times are coming uh, in many ways. And some of it is going to be pretty disastrous. And some of it seems to end about how could anybody survive? And yes, it's got to be something like that because out of the 7 billion population, 6 billion has to be dead before Jesus returns and puts his foot on the Mount of Olives. And 6 billion people being killed, that's an awful lot of them. And we hear an awful lot about Christians won't have to go through that. If you accept Jesus, then the rapture will happen before the tribulation, and so you'll miss it all. Well, that's not what the Bible actually says. The Bible said there is a shaking and that you're going to have to go through at least half of the tribulation uh, for a shaking because we have 2,000 years of Christianity and we're doing everything in our own will and not allowing God to really take charge of our lives so often. And Christian leaders are always trying to control things over the past. Maybe you got a really good leader in your church or something, or pastor, but you 
most likely will realize just by what everybody's saying in the church is that in the past the church has been pretty bad and we hear about all kinds of things we hear about the Muslims today how their religion is based on kill all the other religions and make the world Islam and but that's in some ways is what Christianity has done in the past and this is not what God said God said be a witness so you, you're supposed to be witnessing what God's doing in your life and others will see that and they will want to get to know Jesus. But when you try to say you're going to go to hell if you don't accept Jesus or something like that, then you're, you're, doing, you're not doing what Jesus told you. He didn't tell you to tell people to, they're going to go to hell. When they read the Bible, they're going to learn about Jesus just like you did. So you need to be ready for the events that are coming up and need to know some of the facts about Christianity. And there's lots of things about Christianity that it would be helpful for you to help you get along in these days. But you'll learn that the church has not always been wonderful and today if you think that it's any kind of thing better, then you got it pretty wrong because there are books of antiquity that do talk about that the church will be praising God and then sudden calamity begins to strike and you'll ask God why uh, because you won't think you're doing all that bad and he'll basically say he's shaking you for church-wide sin and even now your sin today is worse than your ancestors in Christianity and it doesn't take too long to know how bad the bad areas are in Christianity there's a lot of good areas of course we can talk a long time on the good areas is the and uh, how much Christianity is spread and has done good in the world uh, and you, there's lots of things that's good in your life that you're walking in the Lord and everything and that's just wonderful however there's things that you just don't understand that are pretty severe and it's your condemnation of others is often the case there has been so many people that have been persecuted by the church by the church Christians persecuting Christians is a common theme in Christianity and today it's no worse than that we got a bulk of Christianity that thinks they're the only ones that are going to be saved and any other type of Christian can't be saved you got like the red list the red state Christians and the blue state Christians and the red state Christians don't think the blue state Christians are actually saved in the red state Christian, we could pretty much trace all the background to below the Mason-Dixie line in the United States, which uh, originally was where the when we were back in the slave days, and we can see that throughout history, the kind of people that holds the the philosophies of that what is now today just simply called the red states which is based back as far back as in the early stages of America how the south and the north became enemies and we had the civil war and but that south the thing is when you look through the history even to present day is they've evolved into what we call red states and some of those red states has come northward a little bit but the history is always has a basis in bigotry and hatred of others and point fingers and condemning and and wanting to make laws to that they think is would please God or something and the, there is a good chance that we that there are people that say that there's works to try to legislate the gospel and there's always 
been this phase or el element of society that thinks that if, if, if we can only legislate the gospel, but Jesus never said that. The governments are already on his shoulders. And so we get people that are otherwise pretty good prophecy teachers and everything, but then when they come up, they try to say, what's kind of, we're going downhill today. And one of the things that they're always in their list of saying that America's going downhill is they're saying that now all 50 states have gay marriage. So this is so against. Uh, God's law that this is why the United States is going downhill and if Christians get in to become presidents they'll try to abolish all those gains however that the actual facts of things is just like black rights and other minority rights and women's rights and everything like that there is a process of events that brings these rights more prevalent and so when you follow the gay rights movement it's very similar they had to work long and hard this just didn't happen overnight you didn't get all 50 states to be same-sex marriage at the snap of a finger there's been so many court cases and if you follow those court cases, you'll find out that the red state side of the debate, the, the anti-gay participants in court cases, they just want to say, it's in the Bible. And that's about all the fact that they'll give. They say, God hates it, so we shouldn't make it legal. And they don't give very good arguments. Well, on the other side of it, the pro-gay side, you have tons and tons of facts coming in. You have s s doctors and therapists and psychologists and all these kind of things and research and, and of the actual behaviors of people and to show that there's the legitimacy of gay people. And you have the opposite on the other side, where the red state side, anti-gay side, want to just simply flat out condemn them. They just simply hate gays, period. They need to be all, they're going to all go to hell, period. God hates them. That's about the farthest of stand. When you summarize all what the red states mean to gays, that's what they mean, is they just simply want to say, gays are going to hell because God hates it. But when you actually get the Bible out and you start studying the scriptures that are used, there's about 14 verses that are more or less used. Well, seven of those use word, seven of those verses uses the word sodomite. And somehow or another, the church has gotten to believe sodomite believes is another word for homosexual when this is not what the word means. You could do a good research on the word sodomite and you can find out how now that red states are calling sodomite as another word for homosexual. And it was basically 700 years, a little bit more than that ago, that the Catholics had, there's a few powerful leaders there that decided they need to make some sort of a doctrine that they could get people purged out of power. And this is known today as the anti-gay doctrine. They found some verses that they can manipulate around and make into a doctrine so that when a leader comes up and they don't agree completely a lot with those powerful leading Catholics, then they can point the finger and says, you're gay, so now we can purge you out of power and put somebody else in that agrees with us. And this is followed throughout history. We can find that once that doctrine 700 years ago was established in Catholicism, it took about 100 years before it actually was adopted by, by Protestants. And then when America was founded and the first Christians came over here, they are the kind of Christians you would never accept today, period, flat out. The, the Puritans are a type of people that you would absolutely run out of town 
if they had any say over you because of their strict beliefs and everything. And they brought in an especially heinous version of the anti-gay doctrine to the United States. And that's why the United States has had such a struggle with, with accepting gays is because they are so indoctrinated by this group of people that to, today there's no church at all hardly uh, would accept their teachings because it restricts your entire life just about. And we have other groups, you know, Quakers and stuff like that that might be somewhat similar. But again, there's so much you need to know that the, about why you think gay is sin. And then there's a verse that says, talks about eunuchs. And Jesus says to the apostles that this is something that's real difficult for them to understand or people to understand what he's trying to say is that some of these people that are born eunuchs, when you f go out and you do some research, and people have done that today to find out exactly what this meaning, this means when they're born, they're fully capable of any kind of sexual act and falling in love and all this other kind of stuff, except they don't want to do it with women, they want to do it, with, or they don't want to do it with the opposite sex, they want to do it with the same sex. And so Jesus was talking about these born eunuchs, which which, as I said, the, the studies into this, you can, there's a link on my website to it that goes into the language and the beliefs of those days that Jesus was on the earth about who born eunuchs were, and they were gays. So when Jesus says it's hard for you to understand about some of these people, and, he re and Jesus really would like you to understand it, you still just don't want to accept it. There's a, another place in the Bible, Jesus is talking to a centurion who came back and said a servant of his is ill, and could Jesus heal him? Well, the sentence and the words in Greek used says that in that kind of a setting, in, and what's considered a wife as it was in those days, this is the kind of ways you would talk about your wife, that you're married or you, or you, and you love this person. And this is how the centurion was using phrases and sentences to describe to Jesus of his servant back home. And Jesus said, yes, he will heal his servant. And there's, like I said, there's words used in that, those sentences to indicate that this guy, this wasn't just an, a servant, which we would maybe in English try to define as somebody that just waits on you, or a slave, somebody that you just order around to do whatever you want them to do. But this is in fact somebody that he dearly loves and is living with as a married couple. And you have other scriptures in the Old Testament that talks about how Jonathan and David had a contractual marriage, the way that Paul spoke in the sentence of those, the way that it was used in the Hebrew language indicates the type of relationship is a legal, documented marriage that David had with Jonathan.